welcome back to our channel. I'm Kate from Kate and John Mark. If you're new to our channel, thank you for stopping by. We are a married couple living in northern Japan. I model, we're both art teachers, we um, are musicians. Uh, did I mention we're artists? I can't remember. It's like <laughs> the time now is about, um, I think it's going on like 11.30 at night. And I, you know, I just have a hankering to make jewelry. So I'm just gonna do a little like chat and creation time and feel free to leave comments and below to any questions or anything I might say. And yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> So I'm gonna take a sip of my hot cocoa here because it is ungodly cold here right now in Sendai And that's ungodly hot lord. Oh, no. Oh, it's burning my insides. Okay, um Anyways <laughs> I won't be able to taste anything for a couple days um, if I was making jewelry in the States I would go to Hobby Lobby or Marshall's uh, usually I like the the beads and the metal work at Marshall's a little bit more and if you time it right you can use coupons as well as um, just like their stones and beads are a little bit more unique and higher quality in my opinion. If I'm making any kind of jewelry in Japan I go to Parts Club and you might have seen these around but Parts Club is a store it sells accessories kind of like in the front of the store so like hair clips uh necklaces jewelry of all kinds uh yeah you name it if it's an accessory they got it i think they have everything but like handbags anyways but the rest of the store is all parts <laughs> parts for making whatever kind of craft you want uh jewelry and accessory wise so I got many, many, many things here. Yeah, look at all this. This was probably overboard. This is, if you're wondering, $30 worth of parts. Um, I did not mean to do that, but I just, you know, I got really carried away. And as you can see, like everything's really cheap until you add it up later. Like this is $1.20 or 120 yen, so once it adds up, you're like, oh, who, did I do that? A little Urkel time there, but I do have a vision in mind for these, so I'm just separating them right now into the two sets of earrings that I am planning on making. I don't know if I'll make both in this video. I have a feeling that this is gonna go really long. Um, so I might, if, if you like this, I might separate this into two and make the second ones another time. I also don't really have like a big plan in mind. I have a vision kind of in my head, but nothing really like, I don't know, sketched out or I'm, I'm not working off of any image or anything that I've seen. So I just know that I want kind of like light spring colors and that I love gold, so I'm working with gold. Um, today, also, I'm not, I don't have, um, like, the correct jewelry pliers or utensils to work with. I just have some, like, normal wire tools, but, you know, I'm going to make it work. It's going to be okay. So, which one to make, which one to make? So, this one is going to be kind of space-themed or maybe, like, I don't know. It gives me like a Sailor Moon kind of vibe because of the moons. And I, it's got like a periwinkle blue with it. Uh, I think I'm going to make the white one though. I think I'm going to make the white. And then if I feel like making the Sailor Moon set, I will do that second. Okay. Um... So I think I'm just going to start by opening everything and just kind of like laying it out flat and getting like an idea of what this is going to look like. Start with the bigger ones here. And while I'm opening these, I thought I'd just, uh, you know, just like 
chat about my life. Maybe there's people on here that don't really know me that well, or maybe you've never met me in real life. And so I'm just gonna check, okay? Um, so my name's Kate. Full name is Caitlin. Um, I went to school for art education, and um, during that time in university, uh, a friend of mine, Danielle, I'm not going to say her last name just in case she wants to stay private, but hopefully you will know I'm talking about you, Danielle, by this story. Um, she was putting some of her art in a local store, and she was really excited about it one day, and she came back to the dorms. We were living in the same dorm hall. And she was like, you know, I put some of my artwork up. I'm due to go uh, exchange, you know, take some of the old work out, put some new work in. You ought to think about putting your, some of your stuff in there too, Kate. And I was like, no, no, not me, no way. And she was like, yeah, why not? Like, what's the big deal? And I was, you know, really nervous because I had never done anything like that before. But she, was, she really encouraged me. And she was like, no, go for it. Um, so I remember that I, like, compiled, not really, like, artwork per se, um, because I am trained as a fine artist, but I chose to take jewelry into the store because I was a broke college student, and I was like, oh, um, maybe I can make some coffee money, you know? So, uh, at the time, I was living in Springfield, Missouri, which maybe that sounds familiar to you because there is a Netflix, or no, pardon, Hulu series out right now about a murder in Springfield, Missouri. So we were living in Springfield, Missouri, um, and we would go hiking all the time. My boyfriend at the time and I would go hiking. And we would go, and I would collect all sorts of like natural geodes, and crystals from the area and I would turn those into jewelry pieces uh, just a minute I'm gonna go grab some tweezers Okay, sorry about that. So I would turn the, you know, the stones that I found into jewelry pieces. And I just, that, just like the connection of being out in, you know, the forest, finding something, finding a treasure, and then, you know, turning it into something that someone else can now, like, have be a part of, too, was so much fun. And I remember being super nervous. And I have made like several different pieces and put them in a shoe box. <laughs> I tried to like dress up the shoe box a little bit though because I was like, <laughs> I don't want to be lame and just show up with like a Nike shoe box with like jewelry in it. So I put some like tissue paper in there to kind of support the jewelry and make sure that it wasn't just like strewn in the box, you know. Yeah, so went, took my jewelry, was super nervous, uh, but, like, went to the girls who own the shop and just kind of was like, would you consider, uh, putting my things in your shop? And they're like, uh, I don't know, can we see some of your work? And I was like, sure, uh, let me go get my shoe box. And I went out to my car, got my shoe box, brought it back in, opened it up, and I remember they, like, picked out, like, one or two things and just kind of, like, looked it over, didn't really say anything. And then they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll take your stuff. And I was like, what? And it just blew my mind. It blew my mind. I was like, somebody wants to work with me. That's crazy. Um, yeah, and so from there, they had me fill out, like, uh, an in inventory sheet just to say all what they were going to have in their possession, what they were going to be responsible for. And then I needed to mark my prices. Um, which I think I'm going to get back to in a minute. And I remember being really nervous and like asking for their advice on prices, which is not something they wanted to give their opinion on. Um, but they did mention that, of course, selling my work, they would need to take a cut of whatever I made. So to keep in mind the cut, I think they took about 20%, which I think 
Somebody tell me in the comments below is the same as Etsy, but I'm not sure. Um, but I just remember thinking like, well, better than selling on Etsy or something. This is a local store, so I'm supporting, supporting a local um, business, working with a local business, and I can come and check on my stuff anytime I want. And of course, there was like no sharing fee or whatever. Um, yeah, so that's how I started selling some of my work in the local area where I was living at the time. Um, I know I never made like a ton of money, but it was enough to like, you know, I could buy a coffee here and there, which was nice. And it was my own earned money, you know, after I paid back my expenses, it wasn't ever very much, but it was still good practice to have. Um, but I think that a lot of people, a lot of artists, I think we all struggle with selling our work. I think a lot of us were like me and I still feel this way a lot of times where you are trying to you know make work and deep down inside you want to sell the work but it's very intimidating to go out there and be like yeah will you work with me can we sell things together can we you know work together um yeah it's really Ah, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm now wishing that I had like my <laughs> jewelry tools that I have back in the States packed up in my mother and father-in-law's house. Ah, these tweezers just aren't really cutting it. But yeah, I think there's always that fear of asking to work with somebody, asking to put your things in a store or a gallery. Um, and if you have any opinions or any advice on that, I think there's many people who would love to know. Um, I'm just going to quit talking for a minute, though, and try and figure this out. The reason why I wanted to make earrings tonight is because I've been seeing a lot of asymmetrical earring styles right now. Um, mostly on Instagram, but I've noticed they've been popping up more and more in stores here in Japan. And I went shopping tonight. I was like, you know, you had a really long uh, last couple week weeks at school, it being the end of the year, and maybe, you know, get some new earrings, right? Well, like none of them, although I found asymmetrical styles, none of them were like, oh my God, I have to have these. Like, these are really cute. So I thought, you know what? It's been a really long time since I've made any kind of jewelry whatsoever. I think the last time I did was a year ago. So I was like, hey, let's do, let's make some jewelry. Let's just do this. So let's go to my cute little aesthetic space down here. And you'll mostly be seeing my hands working, but you'll hear my voice talking. And I hope that that's good for now. If you don't like this setup, please let me know in the comments below and I'll figure something else out. Haha, <laughs> okay, that took me a really long time. <laughs> I think if I had the right tools, it would be so much faster. But I kind of just want to stop here for a minute and just point out, like, look how cute that is. I would so just wear that even. And that took me, I mean, had I had the right tools, probably only 10 to 15 minutes. It took me like 20. But I like that there's still quite a bit of movement. I'm glad I'm not missing that. I do want these to be kind of like loose and dangly. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I know that I want one of the, just going like for a design in my head here, I know I want one of the earrings to stop sort of shy of, you know, like I don't want it to touch my shoulder by any means. Um, then I want the other one to like go straight, straight down, like basically touching my shoulder. Let's see here. Another drink of uh -huh, cocoa. Mm. Okay, that's good. And it didn't burn me. So let's open up these beads and we'll just kind of lay that out because that took forever. Ugh. But um, back to kind of just like making jewelry and social media and things like that and setting prices. Um. I guess something that comes to mind is I can't really think of a time that I have made a sale that did not involve sharing my work in one way or another. And some of you hear that and you're like, duh, 
duh, like nobody's gonna buy it if they can't see it. But I mean, actually, yeah, nobody's gonna buy it if they can't see it, guys, come on. Like, you know when your artwork is ready. So don't like put it out there before you're ready. You know, both like emotionally and creatively. Don't, just don't do it. You don't have to, it's your work. But also you have to put it out there either on social media or in a gallery or, you know, just having people over to see your work that you're working on. Otherwise, you're not going to share it and you're not going to get sales if that's really your aim. Now, if you're just making art to make art just for yourself, like, who cares? I mean, you do you. Um, it's your work. You do what you want. But if you're wanting to make money off of it or any kind of income off of it, that's the same thing, money and income, then you got to share it. You got to get it out there. And some people are like, you know, but what if someone takes my ideas, you know, my precious ideas. And it's like, oh, yes, that would hurt. And yes, it has happened to me many times. But, you know, that there are certain things you can do in place of that. You can copyright things. You can put watermarks on things. You can, you know, set yourself up to protect your work. It doesn't have to be completely stolen if that's the case. Okay. I want to see if these beads fit on there. Hey. Do they? They're cute. They do. Great. These are pretty. Are these beads anything special? Nah. I just think they're glass beads, which is fine. The I asked that because the other beads that I got, they're actually um, crystals. So, <laughs> gorgeous. All right. Okay, so, 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 how do we want to do these? That might be pretty in between, too. Ooh. I only have four of these beads, so I got to make them count, you know? That might be pretty, wow, what's that? That'd be pretty on top of that. Hmm? Might, might make a lot of noise. Might be really annoying. So, one of these need to go over here. Haha, <laughs> okay. That might be cute though. Where does this guy go? In there? Maybe he hangs in here somehow. And that one. Maybe, or we just have them like hanging off of here. And how do we want this one? Want that to hook off of there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really talking at the moment. I just want to get like a game plan of how I want this to look before I just start kind of going ham with it. I think that could be kind of pretty with so this is like coming off of I also don't really want them to look super full I just want them to be dangly maybe that goes in there maybe this comes I could attach these, that could be really neat. And different looking. Okay, we're getting somewhere. And then where do these go? Oh, hmm. Just not quite, I like this one, it's very linear and it's gonna hopefully like touch my shoulder. I'm wondering if that needs to be like that. But I like it like that. 
I like it like that. Bum 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 bum. Like it like that. Dum 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 dum. We don't want it to be too long. Maybe we don't need that. I'm not sure on the shorter one yet, so I'm just gonna put together the base on this one very quickly and uh, I will start talking again in a minute. Okay, so I got the second main hoop uh, connected and it's nice and sturdy. Um, now what I'm about to try and do is connect these little like seashell pieces onto the hoops and I was just a minute ago trying to fit the small little connector pieces onto the seashell and the spacing between the actual hole for the shell in combination with the connector piece doesn't leave me a whole lot of room then to link another you know metal work to put it attach it onto this main big hoop so I think that what I'm gonna do is actually use this long connector piece and you know make my own deal going on which might be kind of nice because then it can maybe hang a little bit more center or something it might look cute so let's go for that um, another thing that I was thinking of is I don't have wire cutters, so, you know, great. i got to use scissors. Not, again, not the correct option. Do not be like me. My husband is going to be kind of upset about this, actually, probably. Sorry, babe. He's in Tokyo right now for work. Actually, for work, like, <laughs> eight hours ago, but... He went with a coworker and they got like dinner and went, you know, walking around afterwards. So they had a good time, I hope. Okay, will this fit? Yes, okay. Just gonna adjust this a little bit to hold the shelf. If anyone has any advice on what you do to watermark your work or copyright your work, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there are many other artists who are interested in hearing, you know, how you go about that for yourself and what you think maybe the pros and cons are of it. Um, just open that up in the comments. Or both start sharing. Okay. We're gonna try this end actually. Uh, because this is round, I am using just kind of the curve here of the wire tools. It's not necessarily like the smoothest action, but you know, gotta make it work for ourselves. I might fine tune these later. I'm pretty sure here in the area, like Daiso even sells wire tools for jewelry, I just, I don't know. Basically, you know, when you have the urge to make jewelry, you just, you know, just, you just make jewelry. That's how it goes. That is how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna snip the top of this off. Oop, there it goes, okay. Don't want anybody stepping on that later. And I think it might look nice kind of hanging a bit from the top. Let's see where that, that puts that in there. Hmm. 
might have to hook it on to the main uh, earring hook. Sorry, just doing a bit of thinking here about how high I want it to, how low I want it to hang actually. Okay, probably about there. Just going to do a little bit of a bend so I know where I want this to go. ever so slightly up here. We don't need a lot. You might hear me sing a little bit in this video. Do do do. Okay. I was thinking it might be fun to <laughs> to ask in the comments. Uh, what is a way that you made money during university? But then, like all of these terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, things such as like my floor mates and I used to joke about um, going and keeping people company during dinners, like being hired out to go to fancy dinners and whatever with people, you know. N no offense if that's how you make money, really. We thought it was a really good idea for quite a long time, but none of us did it because we didn't trust people in the area. So, you know. Okay. And also because we were worried about maybe some certain expectations that might come along with that uh, that we weren't willing to fulfill. And okay, that's all I'm going to say. But if you have like a way you want to share how you made money in your university, that could be fun. Share away. I don't care. Even if it is that you went to dinner or whatever with people. You know, this is real life. Ugh. Oh God, that went flying. Okay, wow. Oh, eerie. <laughs> I feel like these are going to look a little jank. They just, you know, if anybody comes to look at them, I'll be like, yeah, 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 take like three steps back. Okay, cool. You're good. Now you can look at them. Um, let's just keep going though, because, you know, it, it can only go up from here. Sure. Okay, I'm going to, right now I have one of the, like, white beads on a long connector. I'm just going to open this up and connect it directly to the main hoop that we have working here. Connecting this <laughs> okay, well, I did it. Yeah, okay, that's cute. I think I will just connect this directly to the... Could I do... No, just do this. Okay. Trying to get ahead of myself. That's probably not good. I just need to take it one step at a time. That way it doesn't get all messy and weird. If you guys ever have any questions about Japan or, like, if you're curious about anything... Uh, any one of our videos, you are more than welcome to comment on that. Or if you feel more so inclined, we both have Instagram accounts. John Mark and I both uh, separate accounts. Actually, I have multiple accounts. John Mark, I think, just has the one. But I will link those. So if you would rather, you know, leave us a comment there, feel free. But definitely on here or anywhere else, anytime, we would be more than happy to talk about this country that we love very, very much. Japan. Okay, we're getting there. This is coming together. What's a topic? What's a topic? Guys, do you, you want to hear? I talk, I'm talking to you like this is a live stream, like you're here right now with me. Do you want to hear the story about how I found out that a certain myth mythological creature was not real. Sorry, Grandma, this is about me and you. Here it comes, Grandma Pat. So when I was a little girl, and this all comes to mind because like these look very magical, and I'm like, oh my God, magic. Okay, so when I was a little girl, maybe I wasn't like that young. Maybe I was like six or seven. Um, 
So, not like super little. It was not like I was like a five-year-old or four or something. I was young. Anyways. I was watching like the Discovery Planet or Discovery Channel or History Channel. Something. It was some sort of like educational channel. At my grandma's house. It was like summertime. I remember distinctly. It was just me over. And we had like, I don't know. We had just like finished eating and she was folding laundry. We were in her living room and uh, we were just watching TV together. And it was a documentary about mythological creatures. And one of the creatures was unicorns and I was smitten. I absolutely love unicorns, still love unicorns. And um, I remember that I was just like glued, glued to the television and wanted to hear like everything this voiceover dude was saying about unicorns. Anyways, then at one moment, okay, I'm not even joking. If you don't want to hear the outcome about unicorns, literally skip. I will put the time code. Like maybe you don't want to hear this because it, no, <laughs> it ruined my life. Like I ruined this earring, okay? Oh, where does this even go? Anyways, while well, I'm fixing this. <sighs> Seriously, turn back now if you don't want to hear it. The uh, guy was like, blah, 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 blah. It's conclusive. Unicorns are not real. And I was like, what? No way. This guy's a liar. There's no way unicorns are not real. Like, unicorns are real. This is like, what, who does, what, how does he know? Somebody put some uneducated man on this TV. He has no idea. So, of course, I turned to my grandmother and I'm like, Grandma, is, what is this man trying to say? What, what kind of wool is he trying to pull over our eyes? Like, unicorns aren't real. Doesn't he know? Unicorns are most definitely real. To which my grandma, like, you know, probably did the right thing in telling me this instead of, like, lying to me. Oh, even though it's not a lie. Like, I'm still convinced they're real. Um, yeah, so she, she just went with, like, the normative truth fat, uh, factor. She was like, yeah, honey, no, I'm so sorry. Like, unicorns aren't real. And I was like, Whoa devastated devastated like bawling my eyes out curled up in her lap devastated forever and I just I just remember that I remember that often I remember that every day that she told me unicorns weren't real don't worry grandma it hasn't ruined my whole life just just made me sad sad unicorns <laughs> unicorns but then like <laughs> unicorns are in the Bible and like unicorns are in a whole bunch of Renaissance paintings <laughs> that's gonna count for something right it's got a something some somewhere somewhere that counts for something how am I gonna put this back together this earring is broken like my six-year-old heart when one found out that unicorns weren't real Guys, I am listening to this book right now. It's called The Discovery of Witches. And that is like how the narrator narrates like the main girl's voice. I think her name is Daphne. And like the vampire dude that's in there, he's always like, Daphne, Daphne. Ugh, 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 ugh. I'm basically finishing that book because I spent money on it. Not because it's good. It's like freaking... Freaking one whole coin on Audible, and yes, you can return Audible books if you don't like them, but listen, I ended up really liking the um, Magician series, and I had rented out, not rented, bought with coins, a whole bunch of self-help books because I'm trying to figure out my life, and they ended up being kind of poopy and I was like well they're not that great so how about I just go ahead and get you know the rest of the magician series instead and uh 
So I already returned like two books and I just feel bad. You know like when you shouldn't feel bad because like if they ask I'll just be like no the book sucks and I have the right to return it because the book sucks. But somewhere in my mind I'm like no don't do that. That's not fair. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why I do that. Why? Wow. I feel like when I make these earrings they're gonna fall apart. Oh. It's because I don't have the right tools. I <laughs> I hate that I started this video out talking about like, I used to sell jewelry. <laughs> and like my jewelry is literally falling apart in front of your eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. If I had the right tools, the, the connector pieces would be tighter and it would just hold together together better. But anyways, okay, we're making progress. We're getting there. That's actually really cute. Maybe this is what I'll do for like the other ear because that's simple and pretty and it already hangs pretty low. Let's see, I don't think you can see my ear. But yeah, that's like, that's already hanging low. So I think I will make this same exact design but on the other ear. But yeah, let's keep going. All right. So I've told you about unicorns. I've told you about making art and selling it. Hmm. Oh, guys. Yeah. Why not? Was there a moment in your childhood or even like adulthood that you like found out some sort of mythological creature? that you thought was real, apparently was not real. Like, I don't wanna be like breaking people's hopes and dreams here in the comments or anything, but like, if y'all don't mind if we're sharing these kinds of stories, then I think it could be really cool. I know that like hearing other people's stories, it just makes me feel better about how I'm believing. And I still believe, even though people tell me like, yeah, unicorns aren't real. I'm like, screw you, you're not real. How do we know you're real, huh? Oh, it's just through shared memories? That's the only way we know we're not living in the matrix? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So share your <laughs> memories of, uh, you know, maybe finding out some sort of cryptoid wasn't real or whatever. A mythological man that brings you presents in the dead of winter. Let me know. I want to know. It'll make me feel better about my life. Oh, come on, dude. Be nice. Work with me. I thought of something earlier today. Oh, guys. You know, okay, there's... I always say that, like... My first year in Japan, I really, really tried hard to like follow the cultural norms and I really, really tried to like not disturb the peace or, you know, I just wanted to like blend in, even though that's impossible because I'm a tall, white, foreign person, you know, so <sighs> I'm never going to completely blend in. Um, but I was, like, trying. I was, like, you know, for the sake of, like, it being new, I wanted to try things. So, like, and there's some things that I just do now, too. But, like, being really quiet all the time. Like, even if it's not on the train, just, like, quiet all the time. Or, like, um, <laughs> stopping every time I wanted to take a drink out of my water bottle. Or if I wanted to take a bite out of, like, a snack, I would stop walking and take a bite and then keep going. Now I'm just like, whatever, like, guys, I, I'm too busy. I, I'm sorry if this is offensive, but especially, like, at work, too. Like, I am usually running between things or, like, literally grading and eating my lunch at the same time. I, do, I don't have time to be polite all the time. Um, but one thing that I have found myself doing very recently that I never, never in both my two years here have done 
is when I eat a burger, they give you this square piece of like paper that you stuff your burger in and it, it just like kind of guards your face when you're eating the sandwich so that like if you get ketchup or anything on your face while you're eating it, you know, whoever you're with or the people around you don't have to like, you don't have to be like embarrassed, right? Because you kind of have that guarding your face. And I never, like, I thought it was a really sweet and, like, thoughtful thing, but I never used it ever. But lately, <laughs> I've been eating a lot of burgers because my iron levels have been really low. And when they're low, I just eat red meat. Um, yeah, so, like, I've been eating burgers, and I have been using the, yeah, the little hide-your-face burger things. I almost said like Heidi Hole Burgers, but that's weird. That's not what that is. That's too low. Hmm. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Huh. Okay. Ow. Okay, sometimes when you cut these things, they get a little sharp. Be careful. Put this in here. Okay. Step one. Cut this for their moment of time. Ow. Okay. Guys, my hairdresser is going to America for the first time. And I say hairdresser. He, I don't know how to explain this. Like, he's my hairdresser, but I also work for him. I'm like a model for his uh, salon. I guess he's my hairdresser, but like a little bit more too. Um, yeah, so he's going to New York uh, in about like two weeks he's going. And I'm really excited for him to go. He's a photographer as well. He shoots DSLR and also film. Um, yeah, he's got a model set up there in New York too to take photos of the model. I don't know if it's a male or female, but like, I'm just really excited for him. If there's one thing that has been super surprising to me about living in Japan is that people are really nice. They're just so, so nice. Like, I met Shinya on the internet, on Instagram, like my first year here, but like I was too scared. Sorry, Shinya. You're so sweet, but I was so scared to like meet a person I didn't like know or didn't have any mutual friends with and he had asked me like would you be interested in modeling for me and I was like no no you just that you are asking the wrong person like not because I didn't know how to model but I was just really scared of like being on my own and at that time um I was really living in kind of like a, a an expat bubble, like a really tight bubble. So like I had no reason to be out in the community outside of like my expat bu bubble. Um, yeah, I had like everything I needed and I definitely wasn't branching out. But then when I got my new job, I was just like around all sorts of people all the time and it just like made me grow so much. And then I regretted, I seriously regretted not taking the opportunity to model and work with Shinya. And like seriously, it bugged me for, I don't know, like eight months. And then a friend of mine said, uh, you know, if you want to start modeling again, because I modeled when I was uh, a teenager in the States. She's like, if you want to start modeling again, the industry is really easy to get into here. You basically just need to start a modeling Instagram account and let people know that, like, you're interested in working. And I was like, no way, it's that simple. But, like, seriously, if you want the whole story of how I got started here, yeah, just let me know. I'll do, I'll kind of, like, sit down and just talk about the whole thing. But basically, it really was that simple. Um, it's, the story's a little bit more complex and like, holy cow, what? But yeah, um, I did, I did that and then Shinya contacted me like relatively right after that and I was like, oh my god! And I didn't realize it was him. I just was like, I'm not missing another chance, I'm not gonna be like disappointed in myself. So I was like, mm, no, I'm gonna do this. So I said yes right away and I was super scared. Uh, <laughs> 
And mostly because like I, I know my Japanese level should be better than what it is. I speak pretty well and I can communicate basic things, but like I, it should be better. Um, so I was mostly just scared about like the language barrier. Uh, but you know what? We are really good friends and we've worked together now for about like eight months. And what we do is we just kind of like, we just talk. We, we use our phones to translate or we just use like simple uh, Japanese and English back and forth to communicate like basic ideas. And um, I really enjoyed working with them. It's a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. It's like it gets me out of the house and gets me practicing in a way that I wouldn't be doing on my own. That's for sure. Um, okay, so this keeps hanging a lot lower than I want it to. Hmm. Because I want it to be, like, right in there. I'm thinking it's because I keep making, like, a connector. Oh, that's draw mark. Hey guys, so John Mark just got home from a really long work day, and this is a very casual video, but I don't think I'm going to be talking as much anymore, so I think from here, I'm just going to speed it up, and then at the end, I'll just kind of show you what I got, because I kind of want to hear about his day and see how he is and just kind of catch up with him. So, sorry for my excessive rambling, but if this kind of video at all is something you're interested in seeing again, please let me know in the comments below. Um, give this video a like and thumb up. Uh, we are small YouTubers and we're still trying to get a hold of what our friends like to watch on here. So if you hate this video, definitely do not do any of those things I just said so that we know not to bug you with that, that kind of content. Um, anyways, I'll see you again at the end of this video and talk you through what I made. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so, so much. Bye! This video took so much longer than I thought it was going to, but here's the finished product. I went ahead and decided to stop with just the big hoop and the medium size hoop, one circle bead, or rounded bead I should say, and then one like flat shell bead. And then this one I wanted to go all the way down to at least my shoulder, and you can see that I've got the big hoop, medium size, small two round beads, and two shell beads. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing me make the second pair of earrings. Again, they're going to be asymmetrical like this. They're going to be outer space themed. I'm really excited. If you want to see those, please let me know. I really want to do that as a live stream. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I think I'm going to get some jewelry tools. That's on my to-do list. See you guys in the comments. Thank you again. Bye.